हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू साई जैन एकेडमी टुडे वी डिस्कस पार्ट फोर ऑफ डी सी ई टी टू थाउजेंड एटीन क्वेश्चन पेपर सोल्यूशन फॉर द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इन अवर लास्ट पार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी वन टू वन फोर्टी इन टूडेज पार्ट वी डिस्कस क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फोर्टी वन टू वन सिक्सटी लेट्स गो टू क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फोर वन do while loop termination condition expression returns option number 1 is 0 option number 2 is 1 option number 3 is non zero option number 4 is minus 1 dear student you know that all the looping terminals loops will terminal when a value condition value is given as a false in a case of c all zero values are considered as a false value and all non zero values are considered as a true value from this discussion it is considered that loop terminate when it gets a false value that false value will be none other than a zero then option number 1 is a right answer let's go to the next question question number 142 if a variable is a pointer to the structure then which of the following operator is used to access a data member of the structure through the pointer option number 1 is dot operator option number 2 is ampersand option number 3 is a star operator option number 4 is a arrow operator dear student when we are accessing member of the structure by normal structure variable then we use a dot operator then ampersand operator is used to get address of any kind of variables asterisk operator is used with association with the pointer this is indirect accessing operator arrow operator is used to access a member of the structure variable when a pointer is pointing to the that structure variables so from this discussion it's clear that option number 4 arrow operator is a right answer let's go to next question question number 143 address stored in a pointer variable is of type option number 1 is integer option number 2 is float option number 3 is array option number 4 is character dear student student you know that is a pointer is a special variable which stores the address of another variables when it stores the address of another variables address values or address are always integer values so the address data type of the pointer variable is always integer type that is option number 1 is right answer let's go to the next question question number 144 which of the following function is a more appropriate to read in a multiple word string so option number 1 is scanf option number 2 is a getf option number 3 is put printf option number 4 is putf putf dear student so the question ask is a reading a multiple string so print f and put s are are out of our scope because these are to our use for the writing purposes so scan f is a formatted input function where you can read multiple values of different data types in a formatted manner whereas get s is a function which reads a full line of text which may contain one or two string values from this discussion it is clear that function get s is a right answer for this question option number 2 let's go to next question question number 145 which of the following is a correct way to declare a pointer variables dear student you know that pointer variables are declared in the following syntax data type followed by the asterisk followed by the name of the variable then pointer so in in question he asked pointer variable to the floating variables so float is a data type star is an asterisk operator ptr is a name of pointer and semicolon is a last operator so in in all the four of op given option for this question is wrong so you will get a grace and answer so right answer would be something like this float star ptr semicolon thank you let's go to next question 
question number 146 in a link to link representation of stacks dash behavior as a top pointer variable of the stack option number one is stop pointer option number two is beginning pointer option number is start pointer option number four is avail pointer dear student let me discuss what is a stack a stack is a data structure in which one end is closed and another end is open the open end is called as the top of the stack from which data can be inserted can be deleted the stack can be used stack can be represented by using a, another data structure called as a linked list in which data can be inserted from the beginning of the list and data can be deleted from the beginning of the list then they start behaving like a stack to indicate start a top of the stack that is the beginning of the st beginning of the linked list we use a special pointer called as a start pointer so option number three is the right answer for our question let's go to the next question question number 147 the new nodes are added to the dash of the queue dear student queue is a data structure in which data is added from the one end and data is deleted from another end that end from which data is added is called as a rear end the end from which data is deleted from the front end in general normal queue from this discussion it is clear that option number two is right answer let's go to the next question question number 148 the operation of processing each element in the list is known as option number one is sorting option number two is merging option number three is inserting option number four is traversing dear, su dear student let me define these terms and and we'll pick the right answer sorting is in a mechanism it is in a process in which you arrange a given set of elements in a particular order it may be ascending order or it may be descending order merging means you are merging you are adding you are clubbing you are joining two distinct or two different sets and forming a new one big set. inserting is a phenomena when when you add new element into a list traversing is a method or processing in which you visit each element of the list so from the above question the option number four is a right answer let's go to next question question number 143 each node in a singly linked list has dash number of fields so dear student in a singly linked list it has a two fields one field called as in a data field another field called as a link field data field will keep the data necessary data to be stored in the linked list and link field will contain an address of next node in the linked list so there are only two fields in a singly linked list node the option number one is the right answer let's go to the next question question number 150 the data structure which permit a traversing in the both the direction is called as option number one is singly linked list option number two is a doubly linked list option number three is q option number four is circular list dear student as name itself second both the direction means double way so linked list doubly linked list is a is is a data structure which allowed for us to be travel in a both the direction if we look at the node structure of the doubly linked list it consists of three parts first is a data part second part is a forward pointer third one is a backward pointer so option number two doubly linked list is the right answer for this question let's go to the question number 151 what is the right way to initialization an array dear student the process of assigning a value to the variables is called as an initialization initialization can be done in two stages of one is at a time of creating a variable or array after or you can initialize even after creating an initialization or declaration of the variables so the initialization at the time of declaration follows the following syntax data type followed by name of the variable or array followed by size of the array equals pair of curly braces inside that list of value separated by comma then semicolon the above syntax the option number one is sold hold good for the said syntax so option number one is right answer let's go to the next question 152 the question number 152 dash is used to during a memory deallocation so dear student deallocation means the memory which is given to the processor is giving back to the heap area is called as a deallocation there is only one 
method available in a C which perform the deallocation is free. Oh, there are three more functions which performs allocation method. Allocation are malloc, calloc, and realloc, which allocate a memory location from heap area to the processes. From this discussion, the option number three, free, is the right answer. Let's go to next question. Question number 153. Calloc returns the storage that initialized to option number one is zero, option number one is none, option number two is nothing, option number four is one. Dear student, out of three dynamic memory allocation function, calloc is a only function which which initialize the when a, when a memory allocation process is complete, that initialized value is a zero, that is standard definition. So option number one is the right answer. Let's go to the next question. Question number 154. What is a return type of put care? Put care. So option number one is a character return. Option number two is end of file of error records. Option number three is nothing. Option number four is both character return or EOF if error occurs. Dear student, we know that when a function is executed, there are two scenarios. Either the function execution is successful or since execution is failure. Based on whether it is success or failure, the return type will be different. In the case of put carry, when it is successful, it will write, it will return the character it is written to a file or standard std out devices. In the case if get an error, it will return end of file. From this, it is clear that it returns both. It both are either character written to a file or, or standard devices or end of the file based on the status of the function. So the option number four is right answer. Let's go to the next question. Question number 155. In a command line argument, arc C should be non-negative value, non-positive value, non-zero value, both two and three. Let me define what is a command line argument. Command line arguments are arguments or parameter passed to the main function of the C program from the command line. It reduces, it receives two arguments, namely argument C, arc C and arc V. Arc C contain number of parameters, number of parameters in the command lines. It includes executive name, executable name of the programming file. So there should be minimum one command in all the command line argument. So that it is always non-negative value. From this discussion, the option number one, non-negative is the right answer. Let's go to the next question. Question number 156. In a Java, which of these operators is used to allocate a memory for an object? Option number is malloc. Option number 2 is alloc. Option number 3 is new. Option number 4 is queue. Dear student, you know that malloc is a dynamic memory allocation function in C. No such memory allocation such function is available in Java. So in alloc, there is no such memory at all. There is no such function itself. Dear student, new is an operator which allocate a memory when an object is created. So option number three is the right answer. Let's go to next question. Which is a component is responsible for converting a byte code into machine specific code in Java? Option number one is JVM. Option number two is JDK. Option number three is JIT. Option number four is JRE. Dear student, let me say expand these things. JVM means Java Virtual Machine, JDK means Java, Java Development Toolkit, JIT means Java in time, JR means Java Runtime Environment. As we know, Java is a programming language which is platform independence. We achieve this platform independence by, by converting the, the source code into intermediate code as in a byte code. Then that byte code is converted into machine code. In the, in the above question, which component is responsible for converting byte code into machine code? This is JVM, Java Virtual Machine is the one which take input as a byte code, then it converted into corresponding machine in which machine code which in which it is running. So option number one is right answer. Let's go to next question. Question number 158. What is the return type of constructor? Dear student, we know that constructor is a special function in object oriented program whose name is same after that of the class name 
which is executed automatically when an object is created for the class. So it doesn't return any value. That's why the option number 4 is the right answer for this question. Let's go to the question number 159. What is the name of the method used to schedule a thread for the execution? Dear student, this is a standard question. So option number 1 is init method, option number 2 is start method, option number 3 is a run method, option number 4 is resume method. As we know that run is a method which contains the core step core functionality of the every thread which is going to be executed when it is going to be run. So option number 3 is a right answer. Let's go to visit last question of this part. Question number 160. Package is a collection of option number 1 is classes, option number 2 is interfaces, option number 3 is editing tools, option number 4 is classes and interface. Dear student, this is in Java, packaging is a mechanism where all the related classes are interface is put into a single folder and given that into a name is called as a jar, Java archival. From the discussion, it is clear that packages contain both classes and interface. So option number four is right answer. Thank you very much student for listening this. Keep listening. We will be discussing remaining 161 to 180 question in next part. Thank you.